Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in the previous video, what we did was we set up Redis and Celery uh, on different uh, terminals so that we could get Celery up and running. And in this video, what we will be doing is that we will be implementing Redis and Celery not as standalone systems, but something as a part of Docker. Uh, I will be showing you guys that if you implement Celery in Redis or any other service for that matter using Docker, you won't have to install the prerequisites. Basically, what I mean prerequisites is that you won't have to set up different terminals. You won't have to install the prerequisites. Uh, for Redis, there might be some prerequisites. For so Celery, there might be some other. You just need to define the code inside the docker-compose and docker will take care of the rest for you, just as we did for Postgres. Uh, it's very simple and straightforward. The main thing to take from this is how docker connects all of these services together. Now, this is the docker file, uh, which I went over in one of my previous videos, and I will be adding a few more services to it so that I can get Redis and Celery up and running. So first things first, I will first add the code. I already have the code present, uh, but I will let me just zoom into my screen a little bit so you guys can see it more clearly. I hope this is clear enough. Let me just scroll this down a bit. So first things first is that I will for add the code for my Redis service. And if I do a control, and don't worry, I will be pushing this code to the GitHub repository and you guys can get access to it. What I'm doing right now is I am defining my Redis service like this. The image is Redis 7.0 Alpine, which will basically install all of the prerequisite setup Redis inside of the container, inside of the Redis container. This is the Redis container. And the restart command is to restart Redis and, uh, unless it has been stopped. So basically make sure that Redis is running at all times. And the ports is just so that the host machine 6379 is connected with the Docker containers 6379 port. So basically 6379 port is exposed uh, from the Docker container. So if anything hits the 6379 port of the host machine, it will be redirected to 6379 port of the Docker container. So this is the code for the Redis service that we have. And the code that I have for the Celery worker, what I will do is I will go over it one by one. Let me just paste it over here. The first thing is that I will obviously define my Celery worker like this. That's the name of the service. And then I will define build dot. And what build dot is doing is, I am basically telling Docker that in order to build the image for the Celery Worker service or Celery Worker container, you have to look into this entire uh, directory over here. This directory contains all of the, basically the entire setup for Celery, uh, the Celery app.py file, uh, the init.py file, everything will be set up for Celery in the previous video. We're just basically telling Do uh, Docker that the Celery uh, image will be created for using this directory. Uh, just let me know if you guys are not clear on this one. I can try to explain this even more detail. And the next thing is defining the command. And the command is the same command that we used in the previous video to run Celery, but obviously as some something like this sh hyphen c Celery immigration bag worker. And immigration bag in this case is the name of my project. So basically this will be the name of the folder which will contain the WSGI and the settings.py file. This is the name of that particular uh, directory or folder. In my case, it's immigration back. So if I go over here, immigration back, this is where I have my WSGI file and this is where I have the settings folder or the settings.py file in your case. So once that is done, we have a few more things we need to define before we can conclude. Uh, let me just make sure that it is the way it needs to be. Yeah, I don't think I need this one. This is not needed. Yep, that was not needed. I had an, I had an extra apostrophe. And the other thing which I need to define is the depends underscore on. So telling Docker that before the celery worker is started, there are two services which need to be started before. The first one is DB and the other one is Redis. Th these two have to be started before my celery worker will be initialized. Now, with that out of the way, there, is, there are a few things that we will need to change. Um, the Redis server, it will 
it won't be like um, it will not run on my local machine it's going to be this 63 like, like this whole service is going to be run in this container which will be known as redis and because of this we will need to make certain changes i'll let you guys know where we need to make this make the certain changes if i go to my local.py this is the settings.py file which is being used right now as you guys can see if i type in local host i see local host is been defined uh, in multiple places so the redis host is not local host anymore it's not being run on my local machine it is being run on a container by the name of redis that is the first thing so wherever i have local host written this should be redis because it's inside the redis container 6379 port where my redis service or that image is running so it's not going to be local host anymore it's going to be redis because of the fact that the redis container is what is hosting our redis um redis service um same thing goes for there is another place which i need to make where, where i need to make a change uh yeah so depends on db redis i think i had postgres written somewhere but i think i don't have it anymore so yeah i think so far so good let me just do something docker hyphen compose down just to make sure i don't have any pre existing container running oh yes i had a few pre existing containers running that's good to go and let's try to start this and see whether that works or not so what i'll do is docker hyphen compose up hyphen hyphen build i click on enter and it's running the docker file okay i will only pause in this video because i want you guys to see the logs let me just expand this a bit okay uh, i will pause this video till this pip install iphone r requirement of txt is over okay now it has created the containers and it is starting okay i think uh, it has started so db1 is ready to go celery looks like it's running and i think um, we are facing the same issue which we faced in the previous video that it tried to start this particular uh, the app service or the main service which holds the manage.py file but it failed to do it and because of the fact that it failed to do it i don't think it will run so let me just give this a try yeah it's not running one way of doing let's let's just try to restart this and see if it works or not i did say that i will have a solution for this but i don't have at the moment i don't know why because i already have depends on inside of my this should technically work what this tells docker is that the db service should be ready before my manage.py or the main app service can be ready to me can be ready for initialization but for some reason in some instances or sporadically it doesn't wait for the db service to start uh let's just give this one more try and i'll try to debug this i have to now the db service has started okay so as you can see it's not happening anymore it happens sometimes but not all the time still we need to know why does it happen um so if you guys have an answer for this feel free to let me know leave it, leave your comments in the comment section i'm always trying to learn as well so yeah um looks like our services have been started redis was the first one which which got started then the db then the celery worker and finally the app service was loaded so if i go to postman over here and i try to yeah i got a token and there was okay it's running celery is running 
and I'll tell you guys how it's uh, how, how it's running. If I go to urls.py authentication, authentication. If I go to this view over here, I had a salary task over here which defined the, which I defined in the previous long running task dot delay, and what delay is doing is that it sleeps this particular uh, function for five seconds, and after that it prints hello, which it did, which is happening in this case. So let's just give this a try one more time and just have a look at the logs if i click on send starting i should see something after five seconds and i do i see hello so yeah uh, we managed to get celery and redis up and running using docker i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, to be honest as far as deploying this to ec2 goes it would be better if you guys could give this a try yourselves. All you need to do is, in uh, in the video in which, I in which I showed you how to run Docker on EC2, all you need to do is just do a simple git pull and do Docker hyphen compose hyphen build hyphen d hyphen hyphen build. In short, just you just need to restart your Docker uh, Docker containers. Just reinitialize your Docker uh, containers using that command which I just said, and Celery and Redis should be good to go. That's pretty much it. That's all that is needed in order to run EC2. Uh, the main thing that we need to take from this video is that we need to understand why Docker is being used, its implications, its uh, benefits, how it's saving us time. And uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the main thing which you guys need to take from this video. That's all I can say. And also understanding what these different uh, terms mean like for example, restart depends on command build, mapping uh, a Docker directory to a directory on the local machine as has been done in volumes, uh, how to add an env file, how to make sure that Docker picks the variables uh, from a dot env file as we have done over here. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much the main thing. Even though I've tried my best to give you guys an explanation of what Docker is, I do believe that they're just way more way more to it than what i could possibly teach but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did feel free to give it a like for that helps me out a lot and till i see you guys in the next video this is Moid Lodi signing off